What's going on guys, welcome back to episode three of the Facebook Ads Beginner Course. If you haven't watched episode one and two, make sure you go back and watch it. In those videos, we get into the nitty gritty of how Facebook ads actually work. Um, it's super important that you understand the uh, what people call the boring stuff. If you want to make dropshipping successful and you want to be successful with meta ads, Facebook ads, I always keep referring to them as Facebook ads, you need to understand how the platform works and those first two videos will help you. With that being said, we're gonna be covering a testing strategy. This is a strategy that I've put together to try and help as many people as possible. With a YouTube video, it's really difficult to do because everybody has different products, different creatives, different Shopify stores, different profit margins, so on and so forth. So feel free to adapt this to meet and match your business. So the way I'm gonna structure this video is I've got a Google document um, in these different steps, I'm going to be covering how to set up your campaign your ad set and your creatives which should take us maybe five or ten minutes or so to go through if you want me to do another video where i actually build it out inside a live ad account make sure you let me know in the comment section below and i can do that no problem i just don't want to make this video 20 30 minutes long and bore you guys to death so with that being said let's jump into it episode one and two recap in case you have missed those and you still want to watch this video number one is facebook ads optimize on the ad set level so what this means is that your campaign doesn't optimize, ad sets optimize on an individual and selfish level. Number two, Facebook recommends a minimum of 50 conversions per week slash the last significant effort effort edit for ad optimization. The reason why there's two options there is because Facebook states both of those things on their website. They're not very consistent in the advice they give to use their own platform. And what I take away from this basically is the more data, the more conversions actually go through the ad set, the more likely it is to optimize and perform better and give you efficient results. Number three, less is more for the reason of number two of hitting, of making sure each ad set hits at 50 conversions. Rather than try and split your budget across 20 ad sets, you much better off splitting your budget between two ad sets so more money gets spent on each ad set more data goes through each ad set and therefore it optimizes faster and it's more profitable for you and number four larger audiences work best this is advice from facebook themselves so don't be too specific with your audiences i used to be a really big fan of smaller audience sizes of like 100 200 000 because i could really pinpoint and narrow down on the people i wanted to show my ads to however since the ios 14 rollout that kind of put to bed that strategy and what works best now is giving facebook a larger audience to target to choose from and so with that being said let's jump into the strategy itself so step one is we're going to create a new campaign we're going to leave all of the settings default basically so it's going to be an auction campaign we're going to select sales in the target objective because that's what we're trying to achieve and it's going to be a manual campaign we're not going to use the advantage plus we're going to set it up manually so we can pick and choose the options that we do or don't want step two so this is going to be the ad set options everything else that hasn't been mentioned just stays as default so the conversion event is going to be on our website and we're going after purchases we're not interested in add to carts or anything else we want people to buy from us a purchase is the target objective the budget is going to be 20 percent of your total budget so this is super important when you're starting any business is you need to have a pot of money a figure x amount which you're willing to spend and invest into your business and you need to divide this up into what you're spending it on so take whatever your ads budget is for facebook take 20 percent of that and that's what your budget is going to be for these testing ad sets so as an example, if you have a thousand pounds to spend on ads, then we're gonna be using 200 pounds for testing. The audience, we're gonna to stick to one country, make sure this country matches the currency of your store. If your store is in Great British Pounds, target the UK. If it's in US dollars, target America and Canada. If it's in Australia dollars, target Australia and New Zealand, so on and so forth. Just make sure people can shop in their local currency basically. Age ranges and genders, we're going to go broad. We're going to include everybody. Well, age range is just 18 plus male and female. The reason being is because we're testing. Unless you know 100% and can guarantee you know which genders or which age ranges are going to buy your product, go for all of them. And then once we're finished running the test, we'll be breaking down and analyzing the results and choosing where to then more specifically spend our money. As for the targeting criteria, then the detailed targeting section, we're gonna go for one interest category per ad set. So what this means is you may have heard me talk about it in videos when I've gone through how I work out my targeting is I separate my interests up into different categories. So if we use, let's say the dog niche, cause it's easy to do um, as an example, a category of interest would be dog breeds. So one ad set would be German Shepherds, Labradors, Chihuahuas, Golden Retrievers. And in one particular ad set, you'd have lots of different dog breeds. 
And another ad set then in another category could be, let's say, dog owner related activities. So you could target dog walking, dog training, dog behavior, dog grooming. And then in another one, it could be, say, dog websites or dog brands. So you could target things like oil canning or some other dog brands that create dog food. I should know more being a dog owner, uh, but Royal Cannon is the only one that comes to mind. So that's what I mean basically is categorize your interests so they're not all random. At least then after the test, you'll have a good idea of which kind of category of interests is performing the best. And then placements wise, I call them automatic placements, but Facebook has changed it to something fancy called Advantage Plus. Basically means it's gonna put it out on all of the placements which it can do, i.e. the aspect ratio is suitable. The reason why I do this at this stage, again, is because we don't necessarily know where our customers are at this point. If we put it out everywhere and let Facebook try a little bit of everything, we can then use our breakdowns, which I'm going to be going over in Thursday, Saturday's episode. So this is where we'll be looking at the results from the testing strategy. So this will be where we take a look at the results from the testing strategy and we narrow down and spend our budget on the areas, the criteria which is working. So make sure you tune in on Saturday to see that one. Step three is the actual ad creative. So the identity, this is basically where you wanna show the ad. You wanna show it on Facebook and Instagram, take advantage of both platforms. And then the ad setup itself, again, remove this advantage plus, make it manual so you can choose exactly how you wanna set it up and you don't have to integrate your Facebook shop. And in an ideal world, you want two ads per ad set. It can be the same two ads in each of the ad sets. Just try and get two, at least two ad creatives in there if you can. Ideally, one image slash carousel ad and one video ad. The reason being is because image ads perform completely different to video ads. Typically, they're a lot cheaper, so it makes sense to test both again so we can see exactly which one's performing best and then double down our budget onto the most effective and profitable areas. If you're not sure how to create a video ad, go check out one of my past videos, which is called The Perfect video ad creative formula. It takes you through all the different steps to creating a video ad and the most effective strategy to use to grab attention on social media and get people to click your ad, go to your website and buy your product. As for the text in your ad itself then, so we have the primary text, which is at the top. The hook, I like to call it, is that very first line. It's gonna be the very first few words that the customer reads. It has to be something inviting to get them to stop and actually continue reading and consuming the ad. Number two is the headline. In fact, let me show you um, an actual ad itself so you can see where all of these things are. So the headline is this bit at the top where it says this simple device. This is your primary text at the top. So just going back to the hook, easy and effective way to fall asleep in under 30 minutes. So it's a clear, it's just, it's crystal clear, 100% clear what this ad is about and it's gonna hook people in because it's quite a bold statement to say it's an easy way to fall asleep. For your headline and description then, it could be either three of these things. It could be reviews. So some companies will put like five star emojis. Um, it could be social proof, which could be like a quotation from a customer and it could be delivery info as well. You could also use scarcity as well to kind of help and urge people into taking action there and then. CTA, so this is your call to action. This is gonna be the button on the ad. These guys have got a shop now button, which I recommend everybody have. And then the link needs to go to the product page. I've seen people before link it to their homepage and if a customer has to search around your store to try and find the product that they just saw the ad for, it's gonna seriously harm your conversions. So it's really important that this shop now button links to your product page. Finally then, to finish the video off, we're gonna cover runtime. So this is really important. We wanna go for two days minimum. The reason being is because the average Facebook user goes on Facebook once every two days. So we wanna make sure that we're targeting the average user in our audience and therefore we can make a more accurate decision based on what we do from the data that we gather from the test. Once your ad is ran for a minimum of two days, the next most important thing is the amount you spend. Obviously, if you spend a pound testing a product, 50p a day, or I think the pounds are minimum spend per day, in fact, so let's say you spend two pounds, you're obviously not gonna show your ad to very many people, and it's not gonna be a very fair judgment of whether you've got a good audience and a good product. And to illustrate how important this is, I'm gonna use a metaphor which you may have heard me use in past videos, but it puts into context how important it is that you spend an adequate amount during the testing stages. So spending two pounds, you're only gonna reach maybe a couple of hundred people. So let's say the metaphor is then, if you're going to an expo at the NEC in Birmingham and you know that 10,000 people are gonna attend, so you pay to have a stand to sell your products from, um, after the first 200 people that come to your stand and not a single person buys, you just pack up your stand and leave the NEC. 
thinking that nobody's interested in your product when in reality there was another 10,000 people due to come through the doors so or 9,800 people and you never know how many people in that massive audience were going to purchase it, purchase it but never got a chance to because you left the expo early or i.e. you turned your ads off too early. If you spend double that and spend £20, you're testing a higher percentage of the overall audience size and that way you have a more accurate representation of how effective that audience and that product or how well the two are matched so my recommendation would be to go up to the product cost if you're selling a product which costs 40 pounds you're retailing it at 40 pounds my recommendation would be to run your ads for two days at 20 pounds per day each you can also split this over three days as well so i'd still spend up to the cost of the product but you could split it over three days or four days completely up to you next steps once you've finished running that test and you've spent that much for a minimum of two days pause all non-profitable ads and keep the profitable ones running the ones that bring in purchases in and that's it that is a very basic testing strategy that you can adapt to fit pretty much any business any e-commerce business any questions on that Please do make sure you're crystal clear before you go spending money on this. So leave comments, questions down below. I will read and answer every single one. And lastly, make sure you tune in on Saturday for episode four, where we're going to be covering a scaling strategy. So I will be breaking down some real ads. We'll be going through the results and I'll be showing you how you then build on the testing stages and scale up to bigger and better numbers. Lastly, like I said, if you want me to actually build this testing strategy out inside an ads manager, make sure you let me know and I can do that, no problem at all. I just didn't want to bore everybody by going over the strategy and then by actually building it out and making this video like 40 minutes long. But if that's something you guys want to see, just let me know and I can get that done, no problem at all. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.